In this presentation, we're going to continue on with uh, clustering analysis. Now, previously in my series, I had a look at hierarchical clustering analysis, and uh, I've sort of finished up there. And what I'm going to do now is k-means clustering analysis, which is a sort of very different technique. Uh, the difference in the two techniques, or for for example, a motivation why you might sort of use k-means as opposed to hierarchical clustering is that, first off, uh, if you recall in hierarchical clustering, if you have, let's say, a thousand cases, a thousand items that you want to cluster, you need a, a proximity matrix, or a distance matrix, of one million cells, which is quite computationally complex. So, um, hierarchical clustering requires a distance or simili a similarity matrix or proximity matrix even between all pairs of uh, cases. This is an extremely large uh, matrix. Uh, if you have tens of thousands, you're talking about billions of cells probably. So, a clustering uh, technique that does not require computation of all possible distances is k-means clustering. So, there's much less computation involved in it essentially. Uh, there's another, a couple more reasons, but this is why you might sort of use it. The approach differs from hierarchical clustering in several ways. The first thing, and the most important thing probably, is the fact that you know in advance how many clusters you're going to specify. Okay, you can sort of reset it uh, and the procedure again for three, four, five. In fact, later on I'll sort of uh, come up with a, a show away of sort of comparing how good each uh, solution is, but you actually specify at the start, if you want a tree uh, cluster solution, that you're going to specify three. Okay, and you essentially you have to multiple. You you run the procedure multiple times if you want to get different um, uh, outcome or uh, different. So you, if you want to run a tree solution uh, procedure and a four solution procedure, you have to run them both separately. Okay. So it's called k-means clustering, and k is the number of clusters that you want. So you actually specify it in advance. Since a case is assigned to a cluster for which it, its distance to the cluster mean is the smallest. Okay. So the k-means clustering algorithm repeatedly assigns cases to clusters, so the same case can move from one cluster to another cluster during the analysis. So, for example, the first case, for example, let's actually look at our cars example. Um, I'm going to use this again. So this is something I used previously in my hierarchical clustering analysis. So the data set is called cars, and there's 38 cars. That's the second set of, there we go, the um, 38 cars. And what we're going to do here is well, I've stripped it down to just the um, numerical variables. So I'm taking out country and car. Uh, cars, is it? So, so that's just uh, I've taken out the two numerical variables. So it's just the third to eighth uh, variables, all the numeric variables. Okay. And essentially what I might happen here is that this first case here, which, uh, this first car, which is, let's see, go back up here a second, uh, Buick Estate Wagon, from here. So it might get, so if I go for a tree cluster solution, it might start off in cluster one, let's say, and then stay in cluster one for a while. Then it actually get might get reassigned to cluster two, and then get maybe bumped up to cluster 3 or something like that, or uh, changed over to cluster 3 or moved back around. Essentially it's not stuck in the same cluster for the whole time uh, through. So uh, this is uh, in hierarchical clustering cases are added only to existing clusters and so once you're part of a cluster you sort of stay with that cluster. Although just within that uh, in the sense of how that makes sense in hierarchical clustering that ultimately you have one cluster but they're just let's say just halfway if it's you have a five uh, essentially once uh, it's been uh, an item is being joined to other items it stays permanently joined to that to those items so computational differences okay it's a very different uh, set of uh, uh, approach altogether to uh, hierarchical clustering so very def very very different from what we've done before by the way i've done hierarchical clustering before this so it sort of precedes this in the um in my sort of 
uh, sequence, but if you haven't seen hierarchical clustering, it doesn't really matter. You can go back. Uh, the It's not based on distance measures such as uh, Euclidean distance or city block distance, but it does uh, uses a thing called within cluster variation to perform to uh, form homogeneous clusters. Specifically, the procedure aims at segmenting the data in such a way that the uh, within cluster variation is minimized. Consequently, we do not need to decide on a distance measure in the first step of the analysis. Okay, and okay, the action in the algorithm centers around finding k means. The k means the three means. So you start off with an initial set of means. That's a mean for each of the variables. Okay. So, and if you have three clusters, you will have three sets of means for each of the variables. I'll come back to that shortly, actually, because you can specify them. And classify cases based on their distances to each of the centers. Okay. Um, Okay, actually, I'll sort of uh, come back over that again. I'll sweep through that again when it, we look at um, the worked example. Next, you compute the, K mean, the cluster means again using the cases that have been assigned to the cluster. So essentially, you start off with an initial guess, find each, um, find each, uh, the, uh, which, uh, an initial guess. So you have three centers, three points. You find for each item you decide uh, what's the nearest center, okay, and join it to that cluster, okay, and then what happens is you should have let's say three clusters. You will compute the uh, cluster mean again and do the whole procedure again, okay. So that's how it works. So first off, you compute the cluster means again. So the uh, and then using the cases that have been assigned to each cluster, and then you reclassify all cases call cases based on the new set of means okay so you do the whole procedure again uh, uh, if you reassign uh, from the initial guess to the uh, new assignment you will uh, come up with uh, you might sort of have uh, clusters change okay and you keep repeating the step until the cluster means don't change between successive steps and no item uh, changes membership from one cluster to another and finally you calculate the means of the clusters once again and assign the cases to their permanent clusters okay so implementation with R it's the k-means command so what we do here is k-means x is the name of the data set or the numeric data set so for cars dot use is what we're going to use and centers and centers is the number of clusters to extract so let's try this out so it is, let's go here, k-means, cars.use, and three clusters. That's what we do. Okay, so that's that's actually the solution. It's quite a lot in there. I'm just It's just slightly going off screen, so I'll just tuck it in a bit. So k-means clustering solution with three clusters of size 11, 9, and 18. Okay. Now this is the ultimate cluster. Uh, this is the, this is the cluster means of each of the three clusters at the end. So we have six variables, and this is the mean. The centroid. This is the coordinates of the centroid. So we got the measurements for the centroid. For the, it's the average value or the uh, average value. So is a sort of a, the center of each of the three clusters. Okay. Down here we have the membership. So for example, the first item is a, the first. Our Buick Estate Wagon is part of uh, Group Two. Then there's a couple are part of Group Three. A lot of part of Group Three, and so on. Now this is within cluster sum of squares. Okay, so this is actually an important one. This actually tells us the um, uh, the total. This is actually quite important. This is the uh, the uh, within the uh, clusters variation that we want to minimize. It's quite important. Uh, we're actually going to sort of use that later on. Actually, uh, the available compo components, the total within sum of squares, which is sort of a, a measure of the variance. Okay, uh, the within, within cluster variance. Okay, so I tell you what, this 10 minutes coming up. I'm just going to stop it there. That's just how we get our k-means clustering going. And later on, I'll just make a few more points in part two.